Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about some of the different ways that you can confirm endotracheal tube placement in neonatal patients. If you're new here, my name is Anna and I'm a critical care registered nurse. I've worked with a lot of different patient populations in my career as a nurse, but by far my favorite population to work with is the preemies and the NICU. And the neonatal population is what we're going to be focusing on in this video. Regardless of what population you're working with, if you're caring for critically ill patients, it's important for you to know how to assist in an intubation. As soon as the patient is intubated, there are a lot of steps that happen quickly to verify that the ET tube is in the correct position. This has to be done quickly because if it's not, then the patient is not being appropriately ventilated and will continue to decline. Some of the most common ways that will verify ET2 placement in neonatal populations are through using CO2 detectors and looking for color change. We'll also get x-rays as soon as the patient is intubated to confirm both location and depth of the ET tube. And also we will utilize in tidal CO2 monitoring occasionally as well. Let's talk about how the sequence of events typically unfolds immediately after a patient is intubated so that you will know how to assist. Typically the intubator's sole job after intubating is simply simply to hold the ET tube firmly to the palate of the infant's mouth. And this is because if the tube becomes dislodged or displaced, all of the efforts will be in vain to verify that tube placement. The entire process will have to be repeated again, and this does not promote good outcomes for the patient. So the intubator will solely just hold that tube firmly to the infant's palate. While the intubator is doing that, other members of the team will simultaneously auscultate, listen for breath sounds, um, apply the CO2 detector, all of these other things that we're going to talk about until placement can be confirmed and the ET tube can be taped. After the patient is intubated and the intubator is firmly holding the tube, the next thing that will need to happen is that someone will look at the numbers on the ET tube to see how deep the tube is. Speaking from personal experience, it is incredibly easy while intubating to insert the tube far too deeply. So using the patient's weight or gestational age, typically the patient's weight, we can estimate how deep the tube needs to be. So someone will get eyes on how deep the tube currently is immediately after intubating. We'll typically pull back the tube a few centimeters to an appropriate approximate place and then proceed with the rest of the verifying. While someone is checking the tube depth using the patient's lip as a guide, while the intubator is still firmly holding the tube in place, the next thing that typically happens is that someone will attach a CO2 detector to the end of the ET tube. Now this detector starts off as a blue or purple color and will change to yellow upon the detection of CO2. There are several ways that you can remember that yellow is the color that detects carbon dioxide. One of the things that I use to remind myself of this is that yellow starts with a Y and yes starts with a Y. So when I see yellow, I know that yes, we are intubated. While a CO2 detector is a very helpful tool that we use incredibly frequently in neonatal and pediatric populations, know that there are a few caveats to using this that may prevent your color change even if you're intubated. Sometimes this color change isn't immediate. It may take six or more breaths for the sensor to detect enough carbon dioxide to change the color. Another time you may not get color change even though you're successfully intubated is in extremely premature infants or infants that have very low cardiac output or very low or no heart rate at all. There simply isn't any carbon dioxide in these patients' lungs or not enough to cause the CO2 detector to change from purple to yellow. If this is the case and you suspect this may be the case, it's important to proceed with other methods of verifying ET tube placement before you pull the tube. Let's talk about what some of these other ways are. One of the most simple ways we can verify ET tube placement is to auscultate or to listen to your patient. To do this, you'll use your stethoscope and begin on one side of the chest to listen and immediately move to the same place on the chest on the other side of your patient. You'll do this kind of back and forth zigzag motion to make sure that the breath sounds that you're hearing are both equal and bilateral, that they're the same on both sides of the chest. 
You can also listen over the stomach and hear decreased sounds over the stomach. And that's another way to verify that your tube is in the appropriate place in the trachea. If you're listening to your patient and your patient's being ventilated or bagged by someone, then it can be helpful to ask them to do some quick breaths. Sometimes with the length of the breath, it's hard to hear immediately what that same sound is like carried to the other side. So to do this, we'll ask for some quick breaths where the ventilator will do some really quick puffs with the bag so you can hear a quick burst on each side to assess if the sounds are equal and bilateral. Another way to confirm ET2 placement is to assess your patient. And this can be done while you are listening to your patient or it can be done by another person while you are auscultating. The things that we are visually assessing for is that we see equal chest rise in our patient. We can see their chest moving up and down bilaterally with each breath that they're given. Another thing we can look for is condensation in the tube with each breath, as well as visualizing our patient and seeing if their color is improving, if their heart rate is improving, and if their oxygenation levels are improving. If all of these things are present, along with all of our auscultating findings, we can know that our patient has likely been successfully intubated. It's important to note that while you're doing all of this auscultating and assessing, it's vital that your patient is being ventilated throughout this whole process. And typically this is done by a person solely dedicated to ventilating this patient. You have your intubator who is still firmly holding the tube to the infant's palate to make sure it does not become dislodged in this process. You have another person who is auscultating and perhaps even simultaneously doing a quick visual assessment to see if your patient is improving. And you'll also have another person who is ventilating the patient this entire time. Typically this person is a respiratory therapist, but throughout this whole process, they are providing breaths for the patient, typically either through a T-piece resuscitator or a flow inflating bag. Once placement is confirmed through a variety of the means that we're talking about, like color change in our CO2 detector, equal breath sounds bilaterally, equal chest rise, condensation in the tube, and improvement in our patient's vital signs, it is now time to tape the tube. You'll tape the tube per your unit or your hospital's policy, but at my institution, we use NeoVars as a tube securement device. After the tube is placed, the intubator can finally remove their hand knowing that the tube is secure and x-ray is called up to obtain a chest x-ray to verify the tube depth. I hope this video is helpful and that you better understand what the process looks like of intubating neonatal patients and how ET2 placement is confirmed in this population. If it was helpful, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel to not miss any nursing content from me in the future.